So we're going to be talking about the integrator fire neuron circuit today, and we'll start by analyzing the different parts of the circuit. So first there is a current source denoted by this PFET here, and then it has several capacitances, this uh, capacitive voltage divider right here, linking the output, P out, and the essentially the input right here. And the output controls a leakage branch, which is secondly controlled by uh, some bias voltage on the in MOS. And what this does is allows the charge to drain from VMIM so that a neuron can effectively reset itself. Now we'll go into the two cases, which is pretty basic. It's just that if V out is equal to zero or VDD, depending on whether or not VMIM reaches some threshold defined by a bias voltage that is put into uh, this comparator effectively. And normally on neuron circuits, the comparator would be two inverters or two OTAs that are open circuit inverting configurations. Uh, well, we can say that IN for both of them, IN on this current source is going to be the same for both by this equation. This equation has the threshold saturation current for a MOSFET and you would multiply it by an exponential including the gate source voltage and an exponential uh, with the drain source voltage. And this current equation would define that of the input current source. Similarly, I leak will be the same for both circuits because uh, they both have a defined voltage at this node, V1, which will be different for both cases, uh, but we still denote it as the same V1 so that the current equation here, here are effectively the same. What's different really is what goes on at this third MOSFET here. They're, they are the same in both but the second is drawn as a resistor because this is effectively on and acts as a resistor when current flows through it. Here, the, the MOSFET is off, so there is no current flow. So all the leakage current is going through this capacitor until it charges up to VMIM and no current flows. Additionally, there will be different initial conditions based on the switching. So when in this case, where there's zero on the output, uh, then we would set the initial conditions for VMIM to zero. And over here, when the output is high, then VMIM will be a fraction of VDD due to the capacitive voltage divider, denoted by CF over CMIM plus CF. Now we'll go into the equations for case one in which uh, V out is zero and charge is being built up on V mem. So here C mem and CF are effectively grounded together so they act in parallel and become effectively a single capacitor. So the current going through this branch denoted by this term is equal to the input minus the leakage current going through capacitor 1. And the leakage current is equal to all of the current going through this capacitor 1 because this MOSFET is off. But in case 2, that MOSFET is on and is effectively a resistor in the circuit. So there is a leak 1 and leak 2. And here, you can say that the total is simply the sum of the two but that will drastically change the circuit dynamic. So that was the circuit analysis. The next step was to program the circuit onto an FPAA so that we could actually see the integrator neuron working. And this is the block diagram. This is the block diagram of the circuit that we built using XCOS FPAA blocks. However, we were, we were not able to actually get any successful programming of the board. We got compilation success, but we couldn't really get any data.
but we did, did attempt to make a simulation model in XCOS for the same circuit, and Margaret will show us what it looks like. Hi everyone, so this is the block that we made for our fire integrator neuron based on the blank .sci file. And as you can see, we included um, the following parameters, um, threshold voltage, um, which you can see on the following diagram, V tau, bias current 1, bias current 2, um, C mem, which is a parasitic capacitor, CF, and COTA1, which is another parasitic capacitor. Next, we tried extending this x cost model or psi cost model into an actual uh, differential equation model. However, it was giving us a lot of trouble, so we just resorted to using MATLAB. And now, we will we look at the MATLAB code that we used for modeling a neuron. So essentially, it consists of the blocks that we can see, and the code has been provided for reference. We first measure, or we first calculate I in and I leak. And then we update the output voltage, we go ahead and determine the membrane voltage and the voltage on that parasitic cap which is sitting on the switch at the bottom. And then finally, we use these updated values to determine if our OTAs should be switching or not. And if they switch, we set V membrane back to zero or to um, the capacitive uh, divider's voltage using V out in the last step. And this is what the actual results of our simulation look like. We, we have a reasonably good output, and we are quite happy about it. Thank you.